Gordon. All right. Oh my goodness. I'm really sorry because we start. Yeah, no problem. We start again. <laughs> oh my goodness. I really apologize about no. that. Just so realize. which one do you want me to start with? Which story first? Um, so we when we started about the mother um and her children, um, and they've been taken one. away. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'll give you three stories. Okay, and I'll name them in because people might think I made this up, but I, as I say, they will be told in their books. The first one was uh, Benson in Conde, the first, a uh, second battalion, Northern Rhodesia Regiment. He served in uh, Abyssinia against the Italians. He went, he was told by his mom to go to the market to buy groceries. And while he was in the market, suddenly this old Bedford truck, uh, army truck rolls up with these soldiers and they all jump out. And everybody's like, oh, what's happening, you know? And mm -hmm. the British officer gets out with a translator and says, you do know that we are now at war with Hitler. This is 1939. Now, these are people in the market. They're like, well, yeah, we know there's a war, but, you know, why are you, and why are you announcing it to us here? And he says, sorry for the inconvenience, but we're looking for tall men to serve in the army. And it doesn't, this doesn't mean like, can you please come to the barracks if you want to join up? This is like, we're recruiting you right here. Whatever you're doing, you drop it because we're gonna go around and look for the tallest gentlemen in the market and they're joining the army. Wow. All right, so unfortunately he says, I was quite tall, I was young, <laughs> Whether I liked it or not, I was in the back of the truck. I joined the army. Now, he said the next time he saw his mom was at the railway station in Lusaka bidding farewell to family. Wow. Yeah, and he says he didn't see his mom until he came back in 1945. Wow. So somehow they got a message yes. to his mother that he yes. was now in the army and then she turned up at the railway station to see him off. Is that what you said? This is after the training. Now, remember, he's, he, then he has to go for training in Lusaka. Okay. He's got to get training. And he's, when he's trained and he's ready, that's when they say, oh, by the way, you can come to the railway station and say goodbye to your son. She never could even visit him while he was in the barracks. Oh, my goodness. So now, when he's all ready now, remember the last minute image she's seen of him is her son going to the market. The next time she sees him, he's in full military uniform with his Enfield rifle and all these pouches and soldier union and bush hat saying, goodbye, mom, I'm off to Abyssinia. I'm going wow. to fight the Italians. Not sure if I'm going to come back, but at least I got to say goodbye to you. Yes. Right. And, and I wonder if I wonder if all the moms and dads or ever ever do did get the chance to say goodbye to their sons because probably some not of them all of them not all of them depending where they were sent you know Africans at that time were were, uh, were weren't allowed to just travel around the country they had a special permit which then controlled where they went so it was not that easy it's not like today you just get on a bus and say oh I'm going to visit my my son on the other side of of London or, or or Sheffield, this was this is different. She would have to get permission to travel from one place if she was in Eastern Province of Zambia to go to the capital to where her son was training in the army. She'd have to get permission in Eastern Province from the council. And if they didn't give her the permission to travel, she couldn't go and see her son. But as I say, they gave her permission to be at the railway station at a certain time when he was leaving. And that's the last time she saw him. And then after the war, he appeared. I will tell you later how, how he showed up at the village. Anyway, now we've got Barnabas in Kula Bualia. He's at school. He's doing his math exam. The army walks in. He says, oh, they look magnificent in their uniforms. Oh, maybe they're coming to tell us more about the war. No, they're there with a long ruler to tell you have to stand against the war. We need to measure you. We're looking for the tall, strong, healthy men. Barnabas, he was just under six foot, so he was the first guy taken. So he went and stood on the right, the shorted people on the left. This is 1942. So now after they've uh, found 
all the tall students they're all in the back of the trunk his mom hears oh you you better get to the school they've just taken barnabas he's joining the army she's she's hysterical this is her only son so she's now they start the truck they're going out the school she's running behind the truck telling them please just stop for a second she's not trying to say I don't want you to take my son. She's just saying, can I please speak to my son before you take him? No, we have no time. The war is on. We've got to go. Yeah, we will let you know uh, when he, where, which barracks he's going to, and uh, we'll let you know. And she's like, please, I just need to stop, uh, just stop for a second. I, and eventually they had the soldiers in the back of the truck. He says, it was so horrible to watch these soldiers point rifles at my mom and tell her to leave the truck alone. Oh Go my. home. Go home. He is now in safe hands. Do not worry about him. We will let you know in due time about him. She wow. stood there. She actually fell on the, on the ground after the truck. She screamed. She cried. She'd heard about Remember now, this is 1942, so she was quite aware of what was happening about African soldiers going into war and not coming back home. Yes. Wow. He eventually, he eventually ended up in Italy, and he was on as a, a, a guard for the Italian prisoners. Uh, there, there's a famous uh, Italian escape. They dug a tunnel underneath the camp which I'll tell you at another story, it's in my book, mm. how the Italians escaped and him and his platoon got into trouble because they did not know that the Italians had built a tunnel right out of the camp into the town, the little village outside the camp and it escaped. Wow. But they caught them because I don't think white people can uh, blend in with the locals and pretend to be African. So they soon caught them, but that, that was another story for another time. Now, the one I want to tell you about your standard with the King's African Rifles is one of my favorite, and that's Warrant Officer Damon Mwita. He was called to school and told, listen, today we're having a special sports day event. Now, he loved his sport. He was small, could run fast, he could jump. But he noticed that as the sports day began, he noticed some European officers all standing there watching the sports and they had a, a, a pad and they were writing things down. And the whole day the, the guys were running and suddenly in the afternoon, all these names were called out, the winners of each event, long jump, high jump, relay, uh, sprint. And his name was called up and they said, why? Mr. Mwita, you are now in the army. Not congratulation. Here, you, here's a, a a trophy for your for your your uh, long jump. No, you're mm -hmm. joining the army. And he's like, "What? I'm joining the army." Yes, that's why we came to sports to see on your sports day event to see who was, would be the healthiest and strongest of you all to join the King's African Rifles. This happened in Zomba. Malawi, which then was Nyasaland. Wow. So now he's, he's, he's training for this sports event, not knowing. He says, I wish I'd known. I would have always come last. <laughs> yeah. So oh he joins the army now and he's trained in the army. And then he ends up, this is 1939. He ends up joining the army and he likes it. He does. He mm. says he was meant to be a soldier. This was one of the rare cases of an African saying he really enjoyed it because he, he loved discipline and he liked mm. the army. And he ended up fighting in Madagascar. One of the hardest things he said in his life was having to kill a, a fellow African. He said, yeah. I, look, I didn't mind killing Italians, or I, but I never got to do that. Mm. But here I had to actually shoot a fellow African over another man's war. Absolutely. I, he said, I, I, we'd learned about Senegal at school. And I arrive in Mas Madagascar. And the next minute, here are these Africans charging at us. And we're ordered to shoot them. The only difference between me and him was the difference in our uniform. 
he wore a French uniform and I wore a British uniform. And he says, then the next minute they're, they're charging into us and now it's hand to hand combat with another African on the island of Madagascar. Oh my goodness. Yes, he says that was not pleasant. He then gets uh, posted to uh, Ceylon, Sri Lanka, training now for a different warfare against uh, a person he called a Japanese. Couldn't pronounce that properly, so they called them Japani. Okay. How? Yeah, so he's training now and he joins the 22nd East African Brigade fighting in the third Arican campaign. And now he's got to fight the Japanese. He, poor old guy gets shot through the thigh. Oh, he had a nightmare, malaria, all the sorts. Wow. And he saw things, uh, a few things there that uh, we shouldn't have seen. Nobody should see, but he saw them. He even saw a, a, a paranormal event, which I had mentioned to you before. Um, he comes back, he's a sergeant now. Now he has the option of going back home. He gets back home just to say, hi, mom, I'm back, I'm still alive. They run away, they're hiding. No, our son Damon should be dead. No, I'm alive. So they, and they're like, no, you're a ghost, you, you can't be. So he's standing there and the next minute they chuck sand at him. Oh, wow. Look, the sand's bouncing off his uniform. He must be real. Yes. Oh, my God. Apparently, in African tradition, I don't know, they said at that time, if you threw sand and it went through the apparition, he was not real. Yes. But Damon Wheater, he says, I had to brush all the dust, uh, sand off my uniform. He said, no, mom, I'm real. This is your son. Okay, I've got a hole through my thigh, but I'm still here. Oh my God, can you, we can't ever imagine the feeling of. So, yeah, the first thing he wants to do is he pulls his trousers down to show his mom and dad where the hole is. He's got a, like a big <laughs> uh, scar there and he's like very proud. Oh, but I did kill that Japanese. I shot him. Yeah, he, he was uh, sniping the trees as we got him. I, I, they, they shot him with a brain gun and that was the end of him. And now they're like, son, can you come back? You know, and he's like, mom, you know what? I was only young when they took me. I don't think I'm used to village life. I don't know anything more. I mean, since 1939, I, I just know the army. So he goes back to the army in, in Zomba and he ends up in Malaysia fighting the Chinese communists. Oh my goodness. Yes, and he gets a medal there for shooting one of the notorious Chinese communists called Foko Kwan in the rubber plantations. So he comes back after this and uh, he gets posted to Zambia from Malawi because this, uh, this gentleman is an expert in jungle warfare. And he has so much knowledge. Remember he fought in Burma, yes. he fought in, 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 in Malaysia. So he knew the jungle. And he gets posted to Zambia to teach the Northern Rhodesia Regiment soldiers who, who were also preparing to go to, to fight in Malaysia. And he loved it here because there was an opportunity for him to work on the mines where I am from in Luantia, where I found him in Luantia. Okay. But he eventually ended up as just a guard. Poor man. Oh my a guard in, a, in, in an Indian shop. Yes, and uh, yeah. and uh, he, uh, if you saw the way this gentleman was living, it was shocking. His, his children uh, tried to help, but you know, the thing is he ended up having to look after his, some of his children, his uh, grandchildren and great grandchildren. <laughs> uh, isn't this amazing? Now, uh, somebody like that who has done so much and from such a beginning where he was just dragged off the street, so to speak. He was dragged off the, the pitch on yes. a school, yes. school uh, sports day event. Yes. And to do all what he'd done 
for his country, his people, and they did not recognize. He should have been at the highest level of recognition. He, he's the one that told me at independence, at Zambia's independence, Britain said to him, right now, uh, you've got independence. Uh, so if there's any money due to you, you should get it from the Zambian government. If there's a pension, I, we don't know. Uh, because this is a new government, we don't know how, but they should be able to look after you. So he went to the, the local council in Luansha and they said, no, we don't know anything about you. You fought for the British Empire. Uh, so if there is any money due to you, you should go to them. My goodness. After all that, and he's in the middle of who should pay him some money. Well, now he's retired. I mean, this is a man in his 70s, I mean, 60s now, yeah. and he's got no money now because uh, he's, you know, at 60, they retire from the mines and he's got no money. And he's lent to the Zambian government said, look, you know, I'm retired. Yeah. I'm a war veteran. Uh, here's my papers. You can see where I served. He showed them their medals. They, oh, fantastic. But sorry, that's not our problem. Go to the English. And he, I still have all these letters asking for some sort of help. He weren't asking for a lot. All he was asking was enough money to have buy food. My when God. I got to him, when I found him, he was malnourished. Oh yes. my goodness! He could he 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 was eating maybe on a good day once a day. Oh my goodness! A bit of mealy meal and some some vegetables that he managed to grow. Yeah, totally uh, forgotten. The yeah, forgotten so generations. He was suffering. He asked me, could you buy me a, some, could you please buy? Now, they, they never asked for money. These men are too proud. And uh, I, I knew, you know, you've got to ask them. They won't beg. They're, oh, no, no. The, these are not the, this generation. You have to ask them, what do you need? So I said to him, what do you need, Damon? Uh, oh, he says, you know, it's very cold at night. Do you think you could buy me a, uh, an old jersey he didn't say could you go to the shop and get me a nice jersey he said if you've got any old jersey or if there's a second-hand shop to buy me an old jersey i'd love it because i'm so cold at night oh and i said damon can i can i see your house and I, and it was a mud house and he's a bit shy and, uh, i said damon please let me see your house and i walked in and there were holes in the roof and i saw the bed was moved to one side where the rain was leaking through I said to him, Damon, why didn't you tell me that your roof is even leaking? He just kept quiet. He didn't know what to say. I said, well, we're going to try and fix that. Uh, I managed to get some funds to, to help fix the roof. And we plastered his house because it was mud. And the rain had been uh, splashing against the wall and the walls had been falling. So I managed yeah. to get the walls properly cemented so it wouldn't fall down. Yeah. Uh, then no blankets the poor guy's got no blankets oh, you got to get him blankets and you know you're asking people who have no idea what world war ii veterans are who they are could you please help this war veteran now in zambia you tend to uh, have a problem where they think all war veterans are freedom fighters now there's those freedom fighters who fought for our country's independence I had to tell the Zambian people, these aren't freedom fighters. These are freedom fighters of the whole world. Never mind Zambia. So now to try and get money from people, Donald, it's people don't give even to war heroes like this man. All they want to do is give him a nice pat on the back. Yeah. And I put it on my Facebook. Oh, well done. Salute. And they send a, a picture of a man saluting. That's all they, that's, they're happy with that. But to actually get down there and say, well, how much does he need to survive every month? Well, how much is his food? They don't tell you. They no, no, no. I, things are tough. Uh, and this is a businessman. Yeah, things are tough. We, I, 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 I'm, I'm helping already too many people. Yeah. And what they don't understand is how they got their freedom. All these people. Oh well, you know that's another generation. That's what they'll tell you. We've got My our own God. problems today. We've got our own problems. I'm saying, but the man is still alive. You're here in this country enjoying the freedom you have because of him. Wow. 
such lack of understanding of that. They just don't get it. And, no. No. and, and unfortunately, it's the world over. You know, there are some people that will do get it, but there are a lot of people who do not understand that particular concept of freedom. Really, I see people who, who understand are people who have been in the services like yourself. Yes. Or who had a grandfather or a father mm. who has been in the military. Mm. But don't expect people to help who have never had any family member serve. No. Wow. No, they, 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 they won't. So but this gentleman say, what kept them alive was the bit of money they would get from the ex servicemen's league. Uh, there, there were things about I had issues in in certain ways about that, but that's something I don't want to talk about. But mm, mm. Uh, uh, the money that I did raise, uh, I had to 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 uh, explain because the, the council, for example, wanted me to give them the money. And then they would give it to the veterans. Can you really? imagine that? They're not yeah. allowed to give the money I've raised straight to the veterans. Oh, I've man. got to give it to the council. And then the council chooses when and how they give that money to the veterans. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, any uh, of these veterans? That was, an, that was an issue I had because the veterans told me, don't give the money to the council. If you've raised any money for us, just give it to us because you know where it's going. Absolutely. Absolutely. And are there any of these veterans still uh, alive? Well, not the last ones in my area have passed away, unfortunately. The ones that I worked with, you know, okay. they weren't young when I found them. They were already about 95 when I started working with them. But they mm. are around. Yes, I've, I've seen them. Uh, if you look on my Facebook, you will see pictures, I think, I shared a few photographs of some of them. There's quite a few in Malawi. Malawi has, in Zomba, where the, uh, the original king, first battalion and second battalion King's African rifles originated wow. from, I think okay. they have a, a, a place to look after these old men. I'm not saying it would be wonderful, but they at least have a an, kind of like an old retired veterans place for oh, them. So oh, there's yes. quite a few. There's yes. quite a few in Malawi. I know that. I've seen them. Yes. Be because if we, through us, could open up, you know, to the world to say these people still exist and here they are for real by linking with some of them. Because reality is seeing. Seeing is believing. And even if they have to be interpreted, what they have to say, if they can't speak themselves, and just do a oh, recording. Yes. This, is, this is the reason why I opened the Medal of Car. The Medal of Car, K-A-R, King's African Rifles. People send me photographs of these men. Yeah. They, they send me photographs. So now I have the opportunity to, to bring the world's attention. Look, he's alive. He's in the compound. Brilliant. And I tell the place where he lives. And then we, then from, but I, I, I don't say, oh, now could you please help? Because, you know, I don't want people to think that the Medal of Car is a begging institute. I mm, say, yes, yes, if yes, you're yes, in yes. that area and you are able to see him, please pay him a visit. Just if you can just go and thank him for his service. And I know personally in my heart, when you meet one of these men, you can't just pat him on the back and say, well done, gentlemen. I'm so proud of you, uh, what you've done. You will want to help. Wow. Here's my thinking going forward, wouldn't it be great to just get an image of the house that, um, uh, sorry, I, I forgot his name, that gentleman that- Damon uh, Rita, I have a picture of the house. Yes, I can show you the house. It, uh, think, it's gonna shock you. It right. will be, shock you. This is, oh, this is terrible. I mean, um, I, when I saw his home, I, 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 I was in tears. I couldn't believe a man that served in the King's African Rifles had served the British Empire for 20 years, live in such a hovel. Right. So this, this he had no water. Story. He had no water. He had no electricity. He had a toilet that he had to go and dig for himself outside. And it was away from the house. And you're talking about a 90 year old, 98 year old man having to get up in the middle of the night. And it gets very cold in Zambia, though it's Africa. 
remember, this is a man who asked me for a jersey just so he could get to go to the toilet at night, which was oh at least goodness. a good 30 meters from his house. Wow. And it was just a hole in the ground. We he must never, tell that story. He never, had, he never owned a house that had electricity his whole life. Wow. Nor a house that had water, running water. He'd never experienced that. What, what yeah. I think would be great if we could actually have the image of his house and put a narrative to it, a summary. Well, you, I, yeah, I've told you the story, so I yes. will send you the photo of his house. Absolutely. This, this, this is the gentleman I told you. He never got married because he fell in love with a Burmese girl. He uh, rescued her in Burma. And they fell in love and uh, she got her picture tattooed on the inside on his left armpit. So oh, that yes, when, I arm, that. when his arm would come down, look, she would always be close to his heart. Oh my God, what a love story. So there's a beautiful picture of her in her Burmese uniform, uh, traditional dress and she's holding two English flags like this. She's smiling and he, she's tattooed here because he couldn't bring her back to Africa. They forbid, a lot of the Africans did marry some of the local uh, women in Burma, but they weren't allowed to bring them back. Now he promised her, when I get back to Africa, I will try and get you back to Africa, but oh. he couldn't. Oh my goodness. He, he could afford it and you know, the war had just ended, but he kept her dearly here. Wow. So I had, I had tried. We thought, what a beautiful story. If we, if, and you know, Asian women do live long. So I yes. thought, I bet you she's still alive. He told me her name and what village she was from. But unfortunately, in Myanmar today, we've got this terrible crisis that in their country. So we couldn't, I couldn't get people to help. Oh my, I, my, my dear passion was to tell her, he's still alive and he still loves you. And he oh. hasn't had another woman since. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely. I asked him, why are you not married? He says, there's my love. And he lifted up his armpit. Did I send you the photo? I think I sent you the photo. I, 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 yes, I saw the photo and I saw the, the, the tattoo. Yeah. Um, yes. Wow, what a and story. On, what was funny, on his right arm, he had tattoos of different uh, uh, mythical creatures that he said that protected him from bullets. <laughs> yes. So what age was, was he? Quite a character. Yeah. What age was he when I met him? You mean? Yes. Or when you joined? When when you met him? He was eighty. Uh, sorry, he was ninety ninety five. Around ninety five. Yes, I knew him for a long time until he passed away in ninety eight. Oh, I loved him. I. You know, I used to, I didn't mind going into the into into the village and sitting. I would spend a whole day with this guy. Fantastic. This man, he he just he, he the stories, Donald. Oh my gosh. What what and age would he when he when he passed? He he'd probably be around ninety eight, going on ninety nine when he passed away. Wow. He's yeah. buried in an unmarked grave, in Luansha. An unmarked and, grave. There's a story yep. by itself there. After all yep. what he's done, he's in yep. an unmarked grave. Well, only the family know where he is. They might have a small little stone or something or a something to say, oh, that's where grandpa is. You but, know, yeah. you know to, to, to serve your country, the word like that, and to fade away like that into obscurity, it is... It's unbelievable. That oh, man yeah. should be, you know, his story should be worldwide, elevated to the highest point. And yet he's Donald, just an he's, Maybe you're talking about the UK or Canada or Australia. We're in Africa. <laughs> yeah, but, they are forgotten. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> Jonathan, I, I know that I know what he's saying, but what I'm saying is, it is the world over that this has happened. This kind of story. That's why I've set this 
the founder of this organization for oh, the forgotten that's generation. That's why I'm so honored to know you and meet you because you can tell their story for me even better. Yes. And as I speak to people, I speak to people who tell me similar story, stories about their plight. Like if you talk about the Caribbeans, they are promised a piece of land yes. and so much money. And some of them got something, but others were given the worst bit of land that you can imagine, right? Well, at least they what? got land. How, did they, you know what the house got? They, did, they didn't, go, they didn't all get got. it. They didn't all get it. They didn't all get it. Just a promise, right? And, you know, it was so useless. It was all rocks that they couldn't do anything with it. A lot of them. Exactly. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So, you know, th this story resonates throughout. And what we are saying is how badly treated people have been treated who gave their all. And in the first place, like the story you're told is that they weren't even volunteers. They were dragged. I mean, similar stories. Of them, yes. Some, yes. of course, were willing volunteers, but the Absolutely. ones I met were drunk. They were drunk, the ones I know. Yes, because I've heard other tales, like um, people tell me that the young man, very similar to what you're telling me, walking down the street, going to school, and their parents didn't see them again. They just hear that they're in the army or they got taken away to join the military. With the, hope of the, uh, with the hope of the army saying, we'll contact you later. Yeah. And now later could mean any time. Absolutely, if at all. These are parents thinking, oh, well, I'll know by tomorrow mm. where he is. No, no. <laughs> so they are used and, and, and abused, if you like, although these young men would stand up and did what they did. And there, was, there weren't any real thank you because they forgot him. In now, the, so the many different when they came back, and most of the Africans came back by 40, 46, by the time all the Europeans had been all sent back home, it was time for the Africans to come home. When wow. they arrived, they, they were given a bicycle. That was, now, I, uh, at that time, a bicycle, if you owned a bicycle in, in Africa, that was something. It's like on the car. The average, the average African couldn't afford a bicycle. Okay. So if he got a bicycle, that was something. Okay. He got his uh, meager pay. I know they were only given half of what the European soldiers got. Absolutely. That's another story. Yeah. yeah uh, which I've got their pay slips. I've seen it. I've got wow. proof of it. Wow. So they got half. Well, and uh, yeah, they so they got their money. I I, I would say not. Not much. Now, you say at least uh, the Jamaicans got land. These gentlemen didn't get land. Then they not, had... Now, not, listen not, to this. not all of them. Not all of them. Not oh, all, all of right. Them. Okay. It's just a promise. Okay. You know? Now, the Zambians ones did not get land. Okay. So they got a bicycle. Now, then the next thing... Oh, now, they're, they're, they're very proud to tell them, you've got an option. Do you want a suit or a sewing machine? Really? Oh, yeah. So you 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 do a bicycle. You can your second thing you do is you can get a suit or a sewing machine. Most of them uh, took the sewing machine because they knew well at least I can use it to make clothes when I yeah. when I get back to to the village. Yeah, some of them liked the suit. I asked all of them. I said, "What did you get?" Oh, they always said a bicycle or a suit or a sewing machine, nothing more. Then they was waiting uh -huh. for when they, re, when they were a certain age, the ex-service men's league would help. But a lot of that also went missing along the way before it got to the village where oh he was. Oh my goodness. Uh, did you, did, you, and, did yeah. you by chance ever record any of your, you know, visits to them? A visual recording. I have some of them. I have to check. They were on my old phone, and yeah. I'll have to see if that phone I can restart it. Yes, I have. I have some of them singing their military songs. Wow. Yes. Oh, I do. Would... Yes, I do have a DVD 
of them visiting St. John's Convent School where they, they, I got the school to say, look, we've got these veterans. It's African Freedom Day. Yes. Let's do something different. Let's get these men. And the sisters of St. John said, brilliant, Jonathan, get them. They gave me the transport. I, I, I rolled up to their houses in, in, in a beautiful minibus. Now, this was something they never received. And guess what? They dressed up in the same suits that they got in 1946. Really? Yes. They kept them in their steel box. Wow. And they put their medals on. They put their medals on. And we, they got in the minibus. And I said to them, gentlemen, this is your day. This is the day you have waited for all your life for the Zambian people to say thank you. Wow. And they said, oh, Jonathan, please tell us what's going to happen. I said, no, this is a surprise. So I, we had to go to all the different towns on the Copper Belt to pick them up. I'd phoned them a week before. I'd phoned their children and said, listen, they make sure they're ready. And they're wearing their, those original suits. And there they were on the time as the minibus would roll up to the different little houses or hovels for some of them. They were already standing there. They got in the minibus, and we uh, took them straight to the school. The school now is ready with a band as the, as the minibus door opens. They've got young, uh, young students holding their hand. They've got girls in traditional Zambian chitenge throwing roses and flowers as they walk towards the school. Wow, hall. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, this was beautiful. They walk in. These men are taken aback. They are over 800 students no. in the school hall. Stand up to give them a, a, a standing ovation and clap as they walk in. You Fantastic. have never seen the, the, the electricity. The, 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 the emotion was so powerful. And then wow. they got to speak to the kids. I dressed up as a German soldier. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, because I was going to be one of them, uh, uh, Cor uh, Corp Lance Corporal Benson and Conde. He was 96 years old, but this gentleman, he was so fit. He, he <laughs> I'll tell you a story about him. He could not sleep during uh, uh, the day. I mean, he slept during the day, beg your pardon. He slept during the day and he worked all night in his field. He was trained in Burma. And he was night's operations. Oh. Because the Japanese were known to attack the camps at night. So some of the Africans were trained to, to fight at night. So much so that when he came home, he, he only could work at night in the fields. And he never used a lamp. He grew a whole field of maize in the darkness. Forgive the pun, but that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, you'd think he'd walk around with a flashlight and a, and a, and a, or a, a, a lamp. No, <laughs> this man, when it got dark at 6.30 in the evening, he'd be off. And they'd only see him come in when, when the first laser, rays of light would come. Oh and God. the people in that area could not believe this man for when he retired. He fed his whole family in growing all sorts of vegetables in his garden, but he did it in pitch dark all oh his life. Oh my goodness. So he'd accustom his eyes. The British had trained him to accustom his eyes to do everything in the dark. And I asked him, I said, how did you learn how to do this? He said, oh, well, yeah, I learned this by killing Japanese at night. My I said, what? what? What are you talking about killing Japanese? Yeah, that was my job. I was I was sent into the jungle with my platoon and to hunt Japanese at night. We weren't allowed to smoke because they would see the cigarette. We had That's weren't allowed idea. lamps or anything. We had to learn how to see in the dark. Oh, and that's how he says I learned. I, I couldn't, I, I when I came home, I couldn't sleep at night like everybody else does. I was alive at night. Oh I became God. a person at night. He was like an owl. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, going back now, 
I'm the German and we have a special surprise for the kids. So me and him had organized the week before I said, listen, uh, let's do a, let's do a skit because he had killed an, an, an Italian in, in Abyssinia. And the Abyssinian had struck him in just above the chest here with a bayonet right here wow. and got stuck in here. And then he shot the Italian and the Italian fell on top of him. And uh, he was covered in blood of the Italian. And they actually thought the two had killed each other until he was still moving underneath the Italian. So I said, I know. Uh, could we do that reenactment again? And he said, yeah, sure, let's do it. I said, the really? kids will really see what war is all about. So I made these replica Enfield rifles. And I thought, I have to be careful with his bayonet because this dude will kill me. So I made him a wood one. <laughs> Even though he's 98 years old. He, he, and so I suddenly I rush out as he's talking and he takes his rifle and he smacks my rifle out the way and he goes Wah! and he stabs me and I fall over. The school went wild. They oh could not God. believe this man at 98 could do that. Oh my God. You haven't got a recording of that, have you? You haven't got you haven't... Then he pulled down his shirt like that and he showed the kids. He says, that's what really happened. Today, that was just play. But what you oh. saw... I killed that man and look what he did to me. And he pulled down and he showed the kids. Oh my God. Then, then the school had the choir singing for them. But one of the best things they did was we organized some of the older African music, which I have on my gramophones from the, I've got a few gramophones from World War II with their records and we played their music. So all these veterans get up and they start dancing and they're starting to pull the kids in to dance with them. This, and these guys can really jive, eh? They're still mm. dancing at 95, mm. 96, 98, and they're dancing with the kids. You're talking about 700 kids fighting just to get near them, just to touch them and to dance with them. It was almost like a riot. Wow. Because now suddenly I, with these men had brought them and said, these are the real heroes of Zambia. And the Zambian people, the young kids realized, wow, we have them. They're here, they're alive, they're with us. And they were dancing with the kids and I have the videos, I've got the whole thing. Excellent. It's on the CD, I've got it on a CD. I have to figure out how I can transfer it to CD to you, to send to you. Yes, 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 yes. The, 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 the good ways of doing this and that would be great to have that so that we can put it up on your on you'll the see Zambia. them getting out of the minibus and you'll see the, the the little girls throwing the flowers on the floor to welcome them yeah fantastic uh jonathan this has been a blast i mean <laughs> and i know you have more to tell so what, I, what oh, I'm gonna yeah. well i told you I, it's all in a book well someday yeah. god willing I'll have yes. the book published yes, to yes, tell yes. the stories. Yes, very yes. funny, very sad, and some parts extremely cruel. I'm yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So what I'm going to do now is say, let's call this part one. Yeah? yeah. And we can catch up another time and talk more about other things. You know, your, your, your lineage if you like and your life story and how yeah, you become whatever you want to know i'm here i'm not running yeah. away <laughs> okay that's great let, 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 let's do that and i will call this part one what i'll do is um um stop here for now and yes. saying thank you so much for linking with you're the you're welcome Donald, you're welcome and if you need any uh, any more information or anything if i can help i will i'll try i'll do my Absolutely. best Absolutely. So we'll stay in contact and I'll come back to you and we'll carry on with episode two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.